Hopefully after I finish this series it should become a full stack web development tutorial with Python. If slash when that happens I'll probably update all the titles to make a bit more sense as a series but for the time being I'm starting with Flask and that is where you should kind of start with web development using Python. I'll be going over things like Flask, HTML and CSS, JavaScript, MongoDB, UWSGI or Unicorn, I'm not sure which one I'm going to be using yet, um, Nginx and deployment on Linux and whatnot. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to go through, although most of it you don't have to deal with till deployment. But for this video, I'm starting with Flask. But you can't start with Flask if you don't have Flask installed. So the first step is to actually install Flask. But the issue there is that you need pip for that. And funny enough, not all Python versions come with the package manager pip uh, pre-installed. If you're on a version that doesn't have it pre-installed, you should probably change your Python version anyways because uh, I'm pretty sure everything that's 3.4 or newer should come with pip installed. So to install Flask, you should be able to do pip install flask and you'll see that for me it's already been installed sometimes typing pip won't actually use pip in windows it may not be assigned if you've got python working where you can just type python and get the shell right there you can do python dash m pip and then install flask and then if that's not working for you you can uh find out where your python install is and then you can do the extended version of that where you find your python executable and install pip from there so you can find your path by starting up python which obviously you can't start it like this if you don't know where your path is and the python keyword there is not working uh, but if you know how to run a python script you can uh just import os import sys os.path dir name sys.executable you get your path and then you can do this down here where you paste in your path add um, watch out for these double backslashes by the way you can paste in your path put in python.exe on the end because uh, the python executable is under the top level directory there and then you can do dash m pip so it's a matter of just finding that python executable and doing dash m pip and then you can add the install flask on the end of this command but that's the extreme case uh, most people should be fine with just pip install flask anyways time to get started with flask so obviously the first thing we're going to need to do is import flask so from flask import flask and then with Flask, everything is under an application object that you can create, which is doing app flask name. That'll create your instance of Flask there. And the next part, if you aren't very experienced with Python, and actually, even if you're moderately experienced with Python, this might look a bit unfamiliar to you. We're going to be using something called decorators. You honestly don't really have to know what decorators are or how they work to do this. Uh, it's fairly intuitive, uh, but just know it's some different functionality you haven't really seen before. In summary, decorators are just uh, wrappers for functions. Anyways, so what we're going to do here is app.root, well at app.root, and then you put the string of slash there, and below it you have to put def and then you can name this function anything, but I'm going to call it home because this is going to be the endpoint for home. And then I get to return something. So I'm going to do welcome to my home. We appear to be lacking in furniture and then end the string. Okay, so if this isn't immediately apparent what I'm doing here, I'm taking the slash endpoint for my website, creating a function that returns that string. So when someone visits just the top level URL for my website, which is just slash, they should get this response. And this is just an HTML tag for italics. And that's just an example early on of how you can implement HTML here. This is all HTML technically, but here are some HTML tags. Anyways, so next up you have to set it up so you can start the whole thing. So if name is main. If you haven't seen this before, this just ensures that you're running this script instead of like importing it into another script. So you actually don't need it, but it's just a nice safeguard that a lot of people use. And then you just type app.run, which is the name of your instance of Flask here, and then close that. So with that, we should have a working website, at least for ourselves. So it's not on the web, but yeah, you'll see. 
So first off, I'd like to say that if you're using idle, I've personally had issues where if I run flask and idle using like F5 or whatever, or hitting run, it'll have issues and not run correctly. If you do have issues where it's not running correctly, I recommend just opening up a terminal and running it from there. So I've got my command line here and it should just be Python and then flusk.py because that's what I named my thing. So you can see that Flask started up and it says it's running on that IP at the port 5000. So you can just type that into your browser. So here, let me bring over my thing here. HTTP slash slash 127.0.0.1. 5,000 and you can see it responded with what I put in my function. So there we go. We've got a functioning website. This is essentially our hello world. It's also worth noting that this IP address is the same as localhost so that the local address for your machine for looping back to itself, I think. Uh, so you can just do localhost and it'll take you the same page. Anyways, uh, without that out of the way, I can introduce you to a couple more things. So first off, I'd like to make a second endpoint. So I'm gonna enter the BR tag right here, and I'm gonna put a link. If you aren't fully aware of how HTML works, I'll probably cover that in a later video. Just copy what I'm doing for now. Uh, it's not particularly important. Okay, so I'm going to put a link to slash my second page, and then title it my second page or let's just do this, my second page. And the link tag, and then we need to create another endpoint, so just app.root, and then slash my second page, def second page, remember you can call that function whatever you want. What matters is that it's below this decorator right here. Return welcome to my second page. We have potatoes. All right, so if I kill the server and run it again, I should be able to refresh the page and you'll see that link to my second page. I can click the link and it says, welcome to my second page, we have potatoes. And I can go back, this is my home page, and you can see that the URL changes and that's my second URL. Anyways, there's a couple more basic things I'd like to go over. Uh, first off, I would like to go over the response codes, which you're probably not going to need to touch too much. But I'm gonna make another page called 403, def error. 403, you can call that function whatever you want, return, blank string, and comma 403. So in Flask, if you do a comma and then an integer, uh, it'll re respond with a response code. Normally the response code is like 200 or something, and that's what it defaults to if you don't specify. There's tons of different HTTP response codes for websites. They're not usually a big deal, but it's useful to know. So if you've ever heard of 404s, that's when the page is not found. So let's restart it and go to our 403 page. I forgot to start it back up. Also, I typed it backwards. So as you can see, it says access to localhost was denied, HTTP error 403. So you can send response codes like that. There's all sorts of different response codes that will do different things. Uh, I can show you another response code that it, Flask implements by default. It's the, it should be the 404 response code the not found one. If you look in the console here, you can see failed to load resource, the server responded with status of 404. So this is automatically implemented when you don't have an endpoint for that page. Anyway, there's two more things I'd like to show you in this video. Uh, first off, I'd like to show you the HTTP methods. So there's a bunch of different methods that are used uh, when making requests to a server. By default, browsers will use the get request when you go to a page, but there are a bunch of them. I mainly just use get and post for most of the stuff I'm working on. So I'll show you what happens when you use them. So by default, we have get, and you can list multiple right here by just doing this. So you, I forgot the S, but you can list multiple like that. Those are the methods that are allowed for that endpoint. By default, web browsers make the get request. So if I do that and restart the server, you'll see that nothing will change. So it works fine. Now if I switch it to post, which is not the type of request that browsers make by default, I'll get a different error that's automatically implemented by Flask. But you'll see what these different methods are used for later. The post method is usually used for things like JavaScript and whatnot, where you want to post something to the server or maybe an API or something like that. But I'll, I'll go over that stuff later. For the time being, just be aware that they exist. And the last thing I'd like to show you is how you can set your port that the server is running on. If you notice, we've got our ugly colon 5,000 right here. We can get rid of this by 
using the default port for HTTP requests, which is 80. So Flask defaults to 5000, but you can specify what port you want to use right here. You just do port equals and whatever port you want. Whenever you type in a URL into a web browser, it automatically assumes the port and the port it assumes depends on what format you're using. If it's HTTP, it's 80 and if it's HTTPS, it's something else. I think it starts with four. I don't remember what exactly it is, but this will get rid of our port since the browser knows to use port 80. So just gotta restart the server and I can just get rid of that. Oh, I also gotta get rid of this. If you don't specify the method methods for the roots, it assumes all of them, if I remember correctly. When you specify it, it's just which specific ones are allowed. So I can just do localhost and it's here and localhost slash my second page. So that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, next up, I want to cover things like cookies and arguments and whatnot. And then after that, I'll probably go more into the HTML and CSS and start actually working on making something. Later on, I'll show you how to do Ajax, where you've got the client side JavaScript making requests to the server and the server sending back stuff without the client having to reload the page. There's all sorts of stuff you can do. But for the time being, you know how to make different endpoints. You've got your different pages with different HTML and you can do whatever you want with Python to return different HTML depending on what the endpoints are. Hopefully I'll see you guys next video.